bad lice make their own rules, infesting girls and boys regardless of household income. It's a problem that isn't going away and is in fact getting worse. Head lice are among the oldest and most intimate pests of humans. Head lice have been found on the mummies of ancient Egypt. Lice combs have been found in caves dating back since before the birth of Christ. From the turn of the century until about 1970, the head lice infestation rate in this country was dropping. In 1974, there were an estimated 3 million cases in the United States. In 1976, that number increased to 6 million. Today, more than 12 million cases of head lice may be present. Adult lice are about one-eighth to one-tenth of an inch long and are tan or gray in color. These immature lice look similar to adults, but are even smaller. Lice have six legs with claws at the ends, which are used to grasp the hair shaft. A louse cannot fly or jump, but it can walk at a rate of about nine inches per minute. Head lice feed only on human blood, which they suck directly through the scalp. If you look closely, you can see blood from a recent feeding in this louse's gut. A female louse will lay as many as five eggs per day. The eggs, or nits, are cemented to a strand of hair firmly with a glue-like substance. They will hatch in about 10 days. Nine days after that, the louse is a fully grown adult, which will begin mating and laying eggs of its own. There are a number of products on the market, each claiming to tackle the problem of head lice infestation. But it seems that this insect itself may be developing a resistance to many of the chemicals that have been used in the past. Fortunately, one of the most effective, most cost-efficient methods is also the safest approach. Here is a look at the steps involved with combing out head lice and nits. You may be able to reduce the number of live lice by using an insecticidal shampoo, one that is labeled as a head lice control product. Follow directions carefully. These products will kill anywhere from 30 to 70 percent of the head lice in the child's hair, but that still leaves many other survivors, and the product may have little effect on the eggs which have already been laid. Combing is the most important action you can take to break the head lice life cycle. A fine metal comb designed specifically for this purpose will give you the best results. Because their teeth are too flexible, a plastic comb will not be effective. In addition to the metal comb, you will also need these items. Hair comb and brush, hair clips for long hair, bath towel, facial tissue, salad or olive oil, warm water and dish soap. Cover the child's hair with a salad or olive oil. This prevents the hair from tangling and keeps it from drying out during the combing process. Brush or comb the hair to remove any snarls. Separate a mass of hair that is about the same width of your lice comb. This will allow you to more easily see the nits and lice. Hold the mass of hair with one hand. With the other hand, hold the lice comb at a slant with the teeth toward the head. Insert the comb into the hair, getting as close as possible to the scalp. Lice eggs are usually laid about one half inch from the scalp. Pull the comb slowly through the hair several times. Comb one section of hair at a time. Check carefully. And when you are certain there are no signs of nits or lice, pin the section of the hair out of the way, curling it flat against the head. Whenever you comb out nits or live lice, dunk the comb in soapy water. Check the comb, making sure there are no nits or lice on it. Use the tissue to help remove debris and hair from the comb and resume the combing process. When you are finished, flush the contents of the bowl down the toilet. Wash the child's hair, shampooing and rinsing twice to remove the oil. You can again check for nits and lice when the hair is dry. Use a small scissors to clip out hairs which may still have nits attached. Clean up your materials carefully. Soak the lice comb in ammonia and hot water for 15 minutes. Scrub the teeth with an old toothbrush. You can now use the comb on another family member if necessary. 
it is a good idea to inspect other family members, even parents, to make sure no one else is infested. Wash towels in hot water and dry thoroughly. At this time, you may also want to launder bed linens, recently worn clothes, and toys or stuffed animals. Items that cannot be washed can be vacuumed or sealed in a plastic bag for at least two weeks. It is important to continue to monitor your child each day for live lice or nits that may have been missed by the shampoo or combing procedure. For the next seven to ten days, check the scalp by parting the child's hair and looking closely near the scalp. Look for the eggs on the hair shafts around the ears and at the nape of the neck. If the problem persists, you may wish to consult with your family physician or public health nurse. Prevention may not be possible, but there are steps to take which may reduce the likelihood of your child becoming infested. Children who share combs, hats, and coats are at greater risk. Individual lockers, coat racks, and, if your child is in daycare, sleeping mats may keep your child's items from being exposed to head lice. Routine inspections are part of the process. Many parents routinely inspect their children's hair weekly, looking for lice and nits. You should examine your child's head whenever the school or daycare reports an infestation. In a response to the increased number of head lice infestations, many schools and daycare centers have instituted a no-knit policy, which means that children will not be allowed to attend if there are knits in their hair. This policy is intended to decrease the transmission of head lice in these locations. Combing your child's hair takes time and patience, but it is extremely safe and it is the most effective measure you can take to prevent reinfestation and get your family's life back to normal. <laughs>